What's going on, boys? It's Daddy Big. Welcome back to the podcast. And um, we got a new face today. You want to introduce yourself? Uh, hi, I'm I'm Daniel Sturdy. It's great to be here. Yeah, for sure. I'm really excited. Uh, new era of the podcast, <laughs> you know. So um, so yeah, today we were kind of just going to talk about kind of similar to the episode I had with Lucas, where we talked about time management. But um, getting into just like the idea of putting too much on your plate, you know. Mm-hmm. And um, you, do you want to open anything with that? Um, yeah, I, I, I think comparing this to your uh, podcast with Lucas about time management is a really uh, valid comparison. Yeah. Um, because with overworking yourself, it doesn't even need to be in lieu of time management. It can just be not realizing. Yeah. I, yeah. I mean, like, well, time management is more how how you handle and actually do the things on your plate, you know, Mm -hmm. but that like the amount you put on your plate doesn't really have anything to do with your time management skills. I think it is kind of a skill on its own to be able to plan out what you can do in your life, Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. But they're, they're kind of separate, but we're probably going to be, it's all similar in the vein of just like productivity and doing like how, how you handle yourself and that kind of thing. So, I mean, you're you're a busy guy, you know. <laughs> I am I am a, a busy guy. I remember yeah. uh back in my junior year, I started um the IB diploma at my school. Yeah. Which I all throughout high school I told myself I wasn't going to do it because <laughs> it's a lot of work and it doesn't pay off in the end and that's everything that I was told. And then junior year I decided, you know, I'm going to take all the classes. I I might as well do it. So yeah. I signed up for it. And um it's rewarding, don't get me wrong, but it's a lot it's a lot of work. And um you know, I've got that. I I'm in music, so I've got uh I've got rehearsals and practices I have to do. I'm in theater, so I have shows that I'm, you know, preparing for. And I like to do forensics in the spring, so I've really set myself up to just never, never have time off. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And I get that. And my thing is, like, how do you how do you decide what it is you're going to do? Because I feel like I know some people, like Lucas, that kind of just, they kind of just want to do everything mm-hmm. and have trouble saying no to doing uh-huh. things. Whereas for me, that I kind of used to be more like that. But um, the the older I've gotten, the more I've just realized that like my my time is like getting more and more precious, you mm-hmm. know. So it's like I only really can do the things that are most important to me. Oh, for sure. Because, and it's also I this is a sentiment I've I've echoed before, but I think it's also important to realize that you need to leave room on your plate for yourself, mm-hmm. you know, because. You can't be on the on the grind hustling twenty four seven. You know you gotta you gotta take care of yourself a little oh, bit yeah. too. Oh yeah, I for sure. Um, and I think in my case, uh, leaving room for myself has probably been the uh, the hardest thing for me to find. Um, mm-hmm. I similar to Lucas, I really I I'm, I want to do everything. You know, if there's something out there that interests me, and even if there's something that doesn't re- doesn't really interest me, you know, I'll give it a shot. I'm I'd like to think I'm pretty open minded. Um, it just it it sucks when you know you're scheduled from you know seven a.m. when you have to be at school to three p.m. when you're done with school, and then right after that you've got a rehearsal until six, and then. An, another rehearsal until nine you know that was yeah. that yeah. that was my life every single day yeah. for like the first sure. three months of uh senior year yeah because you did marching band in the play right mm-hmm. marching band in the play um and i still had all of my classes on top of that you know that never eased up and yeah i i think the biggest thing is figuring out like you said the 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 value of your time yeah for and sure. separating things you've done from things you want to do because you'll never get that time back 
and the most the worst thing that can happen is for you to be too far into something that you're not really passionate about and realize man i wish i did something else instead (laughs) yeah for sure and that's just kind of like the feeling i'm trying to eliminate you know because i don't know way way back in the day i would just and it's like back in high school and in middle school pretty much every single year when when the musical season was rolling around you know i would think to myself like am i going to do it this year because Mm -hmm. you know obviously music is my passion oh yeah and musical theater would be like a form of that and i like i know like here like here's the thing especially because of like the under saturation of like men in like middle school and high school theater Mm -hmm. i know i would like do pretty well oh yeah because i i know how to sing cast like i like and like i could pick up the dancing and stuff you know like i'm Mm. expressive and i i like i know i could do it that's the thing is like and that's why like every single year i've thought to myself like oh you could do that like i might even get a role or something you Mm -hmm. know and it's like every single year i've just like thought back to like all the theater kids during theater season, like competing for who drank the most <laughs> coffee or got the least sleep. Uh huh. And it's like, my thing is like, I'm a little bitch. I'm fragile. You know what I mean? Like, especially now, like, again, the older I've gotten, like the more, and the thing is like, that's kind of what I wanted to get into is like, for me, I'm doing more now than like I ever have uh-huh. realistically, especially now that I've been doing this channel uploading like five times a week. Mm hmm literally on the grind but like (laughs) among everything else but the thing is my secret sauce is literally just like taking care of myself you know because like i find that i've talked about this before but it's like this cycle you know if you get everything done you can get to bed early Mm -hmm. and then have the energy to get everything done again the next day and get to bed early again Mm -hmm. but if you're up late trying to do stuff then you won't get as much sleep and then you'll lose focus and be less efficient on and the stuff you got to do. You won't get it done. Just, the, you won't get it done the next day. Yeah, and that's just that's something I've just found to be so true for me. And it's like, you know, I, I I talk to other people and they're like, oh yeah, I get like six, maybe seven hours. And like for me, that like again, it's like it varies from person to person. Mm-hmm. But for me, I've been finding that getting good sleep just really changes everything because oh. it just allows me to go full steam the whole day and then just feel great about myself and get some good rest at the end of the day. You know. Mm-hmm. Um. For me, uh, you know, I'm a I'm a theater kid through and through. I'm a I'm a band kid. I'm a forensics kid, and I'm a I'm a I'm an academics kid too. Yeah. So, yeah. I I feel like if anyone is gonna fit the role of stereotypical, I drank five cups of coffee today <laughs> and got two hours of sleep. It'd be me. Yeah. Um, yeah, for sure. I I usually go to bed between 10 30 and 11 mm-hmm. and i wake up at you know 6 20 so that's, that's not that bad yeah that's like seven ish hours which yes i could i could stand to get more sleep mm-hmm. but like i my lowest grade right now is an a minus like yeah i want it to get to an a but i'm not like i'm not failing my classes mm-hmm. I've, ne- I've never failed a class i'm not I'm not falling behind. Um, I just, I think that the the biggest thing about that is, th- actually, strike that. No, I I I know an area where I'm falling behind, because I spend all of my time at you know school at extracurriculars or doing homework. I mean. This is like the first time I've gotten out of the house to to hang out with a friend. <laughs> so and and we're and we're doing business. We're, yeah, we're doing business and we're yeah. doing we're we're doing it's fun. Don't get yeah, me wrong. Yeah, for sure. I I, 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 I told yeah, I totally get it cuz like I mean like, you know, Lucas and I always say that we just can't never stop talking about each other. But uh-huh. like you know, like especially when we were doing more films more often, it was like all like all we would ever do, like, we were still best friends, but all we would ever do was do work together, Mm -hmm. you know? And it's like, I totally get that of, I mean, you're saying, like, you don't even have time at all to do anything with people, but, yeah, you know, it's like, I get that of, you know, this is, like, the only thing you had time to do, and we're we're not even just hanging out, we're doing something, you know? Mm -hmm. I feel, though, um, I wouldn't, 
I, I'm gonna I'm gonna give myself some benefit of the doubt because I don't think that I've lost you know my my relationships with my friends mm-hmm. they're they are definitely not as strong as I would like them to be um but I mean a lot of my friends are in theater so I I see them during rehearsals yeah I, I mean, mean that's just the high school experience exactly you know? just doing things together with your friends yeah yeah I I have I have plenty of classes with Sam so mm-hmm. I mean I'm not I'm not without seeing him. I've Another I've got podcast lunch. Podcast main character. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've got I've got lunch with all of you guys, mm-hmm. and th- I that that counts. Mm-hmm. It doesn't count as much as you know me calling you guys up on a on a Saturday afternoon and saying, "Hey, let's let's go let's go bowling or let's go watch a movie or something." Yeah, but it still counts, mm-hmm. and the. That is where I think the majority of people fall when they are overworking themselves. Yeah, for sure. And that's like the thing about high school is like I've been thinking more and more about the fact that like, yeah, after I after I graduate high school, I'll be going to college and stuff, you know, and I'll still have I'll still have people. But there's just nothing like the high school experience, no, no, you know, and it's not just at all. the fact that like most of our friends now I won't really ever see again. You know, it's just kind of weird, but I mean, uh, I don't know. I don't, uh, I'll, I'll ask this more as like a, like a hypothetical that you don't really have to answer, but mm-hmm. the people we eat lunch with, the people you associate with and call your, your high school friends. Yeah. You just need to think, do you want to stay in contact with them? And do you want to keep that relationship post-graduation? Yeah. I mean like that, that's the thing, right? Because you know, I have, I have different, like, I have different friend groups, too, like, mm-hmm. different people, you know, and it's, like, <clears throat> like, there's this one, there's this one person that, um, recently, we've, um, we've been writing letters back and forth to each other, you know, and, like, obviously, we, we see each other every day, and we can exchange them by hand, mm-hmm. but at some point, you know, we won't be seeing each other every day, and I, like, my hope is that, you know, like, that, that thing I have with that person is really special to me, you know. Mm-hmm. So they're probably listening right now. What's up? <laughs> Sub <What's up>, listener, <laughs> but, whoever whoever you are. Yeah, but um, but it's just like, you know, I uh, that's just some like that's the kind of connection you can maintain. Yeah, you know, and that's something like I want to keep, but I just understand that, you know, like some like some of these people like I just I see them at school, and like that's our relationship, and there's mm-hmm. nothing wrong with having those kinds of friendships, which is just the kind of thing where you realize that like. That's probably going to be the extent of it. You know, yeah. like my dad, he uh, he had a best friend in high school, was his best man in his wedding and stuff. And I mean, they would l- hang out all the time. But I mean, after high school, like he hasn't talked to him in like years and mm-hmm. years, you know? Yeah. So it's that kind of thing where like you just never know. His life can just take you in different places, mm-hmm. you know? But that's why, you know, it's the thing too, as I said, you know, as far as putting things on your plate goes, it's important to have um it's important to have time for yourself but it's also important to have that time for others you mm-hmm. know and yeah. it's just like how do you like a, a question for you right like i guess i guess <laughs> i guess you already have chosen what you're going to do but like how do you think about like what what do you think of as a priority you know like what where do where does yourself and other people fall in the priorities list when it comes to your extracurriculars and your academics you know yeah, that's a, that's a really good question. Um, for me, I I like to think of things I'm familiar with, of course. Um, I mean, I did uh, theater from fifth grade until now, so that's yeah. something that I'm I'm used to. I like to think I'm relatively good at. Um, so finding and and placing you know like a like a, a draft list of of top 5 extracurriculars for Daniel Sturdy to do it's it's a mix of what do i know mm-hmm. what do i still want to know and who will be a part of that to help me you know continue to grow so i mean i'll i'll use forensics as my example because that is bar none my my favorite extracurricular that i do Mm -hmm. um 
the people in it are phenomenal. I love every single person that I have met through that activity. Um, the coaching is amazing. Uh, <laughs> I remember back in my junior year, um, I at the start of the season, I told our head coach as mm-hmm. a joke, I, I said, uh, hey, if you tell me that my speech sucks and I need to rewrite it, I'll rewrite it for you in a day. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'd gone the entire season, you know, consistently getting in the top three at finals, um, uh, at the invitationals, and then at regionals, I took fifth out of eight, and I was, I was very shocked, um, and I talked to my head coach, and I was like, hey, what, what do you think happened, and, and they said, um, Well, you said at the beginning of the year, if I told you to rewrite your speech, you'd give it to me the next day. I'm telling you to rewrite your speech. (laughs) Yeah. Um, and I did. I, I completely scrapped my old speech. Um, I think I stayed at school until like 7 PM, just writing, finding sources, you know, Mm -hmm. citing it all. Um, and the next day I had a complete I had a completely edited and revised draft that I turned in to uh, the coaches. Mm-hmm. And that <clears throat> that um, that new speech got me uh, to finals at states. Um, so that is where all of the all of the pieces kind of jumbled together. Yeah. And made something beautiful because I was surrounded by people who I loved and who loved me. I was doing something that I loved and I was respected and rewarded from. And I grew and I became a better version of myself because never before had I been pushed to, to work that hard. You know, yeah. that, that was, that was the hardest thing I think I've had to do in my forensics career because no, no, no head coach tells, tells a kid to rewrite their entire speech. Yeah. But... Um, but that, that is what makes a priority. Something that you enjoy doing with people you enjoy doing it with and that foster the best community to help you grow and achieve everything that you want yeah for sure i think um that kind of that kind of reminded me of something that um one of my one of my great mentors and teachers once taught me that um he he said to me um this this idea of well because you know he, he was my music teacher for for years still is i don't think he probably always will be mm-hmm. but um you know, after he got his master's degree, he was just taking odd jobs working, you know, for years and years. And it's just like, you know, because be, being a, like finding a way as a musician to pay the bills, mm-hmm. you know, it's hard. And it's like the thing <coughs> the thing he told me is that that really resonated with me is, well, you know, Cam, because he knows I'm going to be going down the same path as him to some extent. And he, he just told me he was like, hey, you know. For me, in a job, you got to have two or three things for it to be a good job, right? You either got to make money, like what you're doing, or like the people you're doing it with. Mm-hmm. And obviously, we're not making money from <laughs> doing anything at high school. But, like, it's just this kind of idea that, like, this just, I mean, like, you for you, like, forensics, that's something, like, that you're really passionate about. And you said, like, you love the people you do it with, you know? Mm-hmm. And that's, like, that's really all that high school is, finding things that you like to do with the people you like, mm-hmm. you know? Oh yeah, and then it's just, I mean, for a job, I feel like that's a good metric too, you know, because, I mean, as a musician, it's like you're certainly not going to be making money for a little while, so no, not, not I'm going to like what I'm doing, and I like other musicians, you know. That's really, that's really what is keeping me in check and making me feel like, yeah, I am doing what's right, because mm-hmm. I know that there are ways to eventually make the money, you know. Yeah, and it's like you just got to get there. Yeah, for sure. So, kind of, kind of a similar topic, but. Yeah. Yeah. So you you said that for you a priority is just something that fulfills that for you that makes you feel good about yourself and mm-hmm. do have that experience with other people. 
Yeah, yeah. I mean, like, if if forensics is, like, your number one, like, big thing that you love the most, like, what what motivates you to do so many other things that kind of almost, I, I won't say get in the way of it, but just... Kind of get in the way of it? <laughs> well, I mean, um, just get in the way of the rest of your life, you know, because your plate's only so big. Yeah. And it seems like, you know, you try to well, pile stuff on it, you know? I mean, um that's that's valid that's very valid um i think when i say that forensics is the top of my list there is there is the biggest margin between one and two in terms of my priorities yeah but everything else is just so closely packed together that it doesn't really feel like it, it in a way it doesn't feel like i'm spreading myself too terribly thin um and i i know that i know that i am but like you mentioned uh finding time for yourself as being one of the most important things and i could not agree any more with you Mm -hmm. um but finding time for yourself doesn't have to be finding time for yourself alone i i I find time for myself in a multitude of different ways when I'm, I mean, when I'm, when I'm playing in, uh, in rehearsal at, at, at band, when I'm, when I'm hearing the music that's being made by everyone, even if our, even if our pieces aren't as, uh, entertaining and difficult as I'd like, it's still, (laughs) it's still pretty music. Yeah, Yeah, Um, for sure. I, I get what you mean. And, uh, you know, in theater, when we finally get that that harmony to to meld right and it sounds beautiful like those are experiences that are for me yeah like those those little moments that that charge you up mm-hmm. you know now, i totally get what you mean cuz like in you know like back in high school band as a percussionist mm-hmm. playing high school level music yeah it's basically like if i get to play at all I'm falling asleep anyways, you yep. know? Yep. And it's like, <laughs> it's cause like, you know, cause the thing is like percussionists are just like, as a, like, you know, I want to be a composer. Right. Mm. And one of my main goals, one of my main missions is to, to write up. stimulating music for percussionists uh-huh. because like, like <coughs> people have just been getting away so, with writing shit for so long. Yeah. Like it's bad, mm-hmm. you know? And it's like I get I get that you want to let the winds go off and do their own thing, but it's I, like you can't just leave you can't just leave me dry for one hundred and thirty one measures. You I know pity I mean? the composers who have to write stuff for sixth grade bands. Yeah, that, that, that's a different story. Yeah, but it's just like like the stuff I like most of the stuff I play could be played by sixth graders, mm-hmm. you know. And it's like I don't know. It's yeah. just one thing that just we've just but concert percussionists just kind of have to deal with yeah you either get stuff that's like unbelievably insanely hard because it's written poorly mm-hmm. or because it is really hard or just easy f- really easy there's like i feel like it's really hard for a lot of composers to find that medium for percussionists mm-hmm. where it's enjoyable and a little bit difficult but not like you know absurd but, exactly um but, uh, tangent aside it's just like i get what you mean about like just absorbing the music because you know like even though most of the time, the music I'm playing isn't very fun. <laughs> it's like, I still, like, I remember my sophomore year for um, when we went to contest. We mm-hmm. played three pieces. We played, um, uh, I, it was, um, well, the first one was Variations on a Korean Folk Song. Yep. And then the it other was, one. It that was really, that one, Pirate, the sound in one. Yeah, that was, um, that was, um. Longford Legend, That's specifically the, the third movement. Yep. It was called Killie and Bray. But I'm, I'm thinking more of um the march that we played. What was oh, it called? Uh, Belgian, Belgian Parachutists. March of the Belgian Parachutists. Yeah, yeah, that or paratroopers or Par- yeah, was whatever it paratroopers. It was. I don't, I don't. Know. But um, that but one was like, so easy. I know, and that's the thing is, like, for most of the band, except the, like, lead trumpets, it was pretty <laughs> much a snooze fest. <laughs> yeah, but like. I don't know. It's like even though my parts weren't anything crazy for either of those, it's like especially for um especially for variations, it's like I like fell in love with that music and just band class was really really fun because I could just go and listen to that music and just absorb it and think mm-hmm. about it. You know? Yeah. That's what's that's at this point like that's what's more fun for me. 
Like, obviously, I try my best to play with really good quality mm. and be a good percussionist, you know? But, like, it's more, it's more so just, like... Because, like, I understood so deeply what you said about, like, just going and being able to enjoy the music that's being made. Because, you know, mm-hmm. like, for me, too, I, I almost get to study it for, like, the months that we prepare it mm-hmm. as a composer and just oh, think yeah. about how it... Like, why it sounds like that, you know? And it's yep. just... It's just kind of, like, looking... I get what you mean, right? And it's, like... Another thing, too, is I started... I started taking an art class in my junior year, mm-hmm. which was something I had wanted to do. And it kind of just, it kind of, the universe kind of just made it happen for me because um, my junior year, I really, really wanted to do choir, mm-hmm. but I couldn't because it was on the same, there was only one choir class and that was on the same time as another class I needed to take. Yep. And I took the one I needed to take because I'm a simp, <laughs> but, um, <laughs> because he needed to take it. <laughs> yeah. But that just kind of left me with another, another class to fill. Mm-hmm. And I, d- I had taken art my freshman year online, you know, and I was like, well, I can try it again. And, you know, I have like some really good friends in that class that I get to sp- like hang out with every day. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I actually, it's because the thing is like, you know, I spend so much time with music as my creative outlet that art's kind of something I can take less seriously, but still mm-hmm. do well, you know? Yeah. And I've been getting way off topic. <laughs> no, no, no. But that's kind of just how the podcast goes here on Daddy Big, you feel me? It's that's also that's also valid because um kind of just meander a little bit sometimes. You know, <laughs> opening yourself up to uh to something that you want to do. Yeah. That is that is you're putting more on your plate, but you're putting stuff on your plate for you. And I think that's the biggest um the biggest disconnect between so many people is, yeah, I, I've got a lot on my plate, Cam. I, re- I, re- I really do. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I do so many things. But the things that I do, I'm not being forced to do them. My I, my parents have told me that if I if I decided I didn't want to do the IB diploma, that I, that I didn't have to. If I decided that I wanted to drop... Um, theater at any point they would support me um even even marching band which is something that they they really hammered that into uh me and my siblings um high school career they said they would support me if i decided i wanted to drop yeah but and i didn't Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and i've never i've never had to worry that signing up for something was a was a deal with the devil that i could not break yeah but i mean but i think to some extent i disagree with the sentiment that you can that you can stop whenever you want you know because it's like i mean obviously like obviously you can like Mm -hmm. like no one is literally forcing you but i think that and i think you can probably you can probably um testify to this that even if you know and understand that oh i don't have to do this there's very much so still that expectation yeah and more importantly and i feel like it's also something very internal that just in general i feel i don't know if this applies to you but you would feel like you're letting people down we're people not- pleasers uh, yeah like huma- humanity and and humans in general have a desire to appease everyone else yeah, um, and it's like, how do you, how do you feel like? Because here's the thing, right? Mm-hmm. I'm at the point now where you know, like I said, I, I'm very, you know, I just do things that I, like I've gotten a lot better at doing things that I want to do. Yeah, you know, but that took me a really long time to have that relationship with myself where I could have that true transparency mm-hmm. and really step back and be honest with myself. You know, so it's like I feel like I see a lot of people that don't have that skill Mm -hmm. you know where because i mean i get it you know i i understand the feeling of letting people down but more importantly i feel i have the feeling of letting myself down you know yeah and it's kind of like i feel like that's a big thing for people and why people end up being so overworked is because they feel like again it's like obviously you don't have to do it but it's like for the something like the the advanced like ib diploma it's like Mm -hmm you like it was kind of a situation of like oh i maybe i'm wrong but maybe it's kind of a situation of oh i could do it Mm -hmm. and like you know you'd be good at it 
you know? So it's like, why wouldn't you? And that would be kind of like, I I remember you told me a story one time about, and I'll let you take it, but solo and ensemble about when, um, some, somebody told you that it would be a waste. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I I actually was going to bring that up because of your tangent talking about, um, listening to the music and band, but not feeling pushed. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I play alto saxophone. Um, yep. you know that, um, I I've do. played since, uh, fifth grade, but I really started playing, actually playing in, uh, my freshman year. Um, and, uh, my junior year, I went to solo and ensemble and I played, uh, a beautiful piece of music, uh, the Glazunov Concerto for alto saxophone. Um, it's the hardest piece of music I've ever played, um, which would make sense because I played it for junior year. Um, but I remember um, in the in the weeks leading up to solo and ensemble, uh, friends of mine in my section would ask to sit in practice rooms with me so they could listen to me play and and I said sure um I was I was touched but I I didn't really click until uh the actual day of solo and ensemble when I walked into the room with my accompanist and already sitting in the room were both of my parents the three band directors everyone was there to watch you yeah all of them were in there to watch me and then that's pretty crazy. Uh, yeah. So um, they were all there to see me, and then a couple of uh, my friends from my section, and my private lessons instructor. So it was it was a a packed room, and and <laughs> yeah. you you've I, I've I've never had that treatment before. <laughs> um, it it was weird. I've never had that treatment before either. Um, and um, it was like a six minute solo. Cause I had a, it's a 14 minute piece originally, but you yeah, can't you play to, that long. You had to trim it down. So I trimmed it, um, and I played it and I, in that moment, I just, I felt so, I felt, I felt loved by everyone in that room, which is an incredible feeling to have. Yeah. Um, and the, uh, the judge in, in the room, uh, he, <laughs> He, he said he needed a minute to just, like, compose his thoughts, <laughs> which caught me by surprise because I've had... This is the same judge who judges all of the saxophones. Um, yeah, and he heard you before, right? Yeah, he'd heard me before um, uh, play solos my first two years um, my, uh, and then duets and saxophone quartets all throughout, you know, high school as well. So him telling me in that moment that he needed a minute. <laughs> yeah. That was that was that was, that was pretty, really, pretty special. Yeah, that was really something. Yeah, um, I mean, I I had I had the same guy m- most of the time too, you know. So I, mm-hmm. I get it. You recognize him, but yeah. Um, and he told me, uh, he asked me if I uh, thought I was gonna pursue music after high school. Um, and I was honest with him. I told him, I'm not sure, but probably not. Which in that moment, it kind of it, it hurt me a little bit to say that because music is such an important part of my life. Yeah. Um, but he said, he said, you know, you know, Daniel, that's a real shame because if you wanted to pursue music, I think you have a very good shot, and I am positive you would make it in the music world. Yeah. Um, and uh, and him saying that really really took things to a different level for me um so much so that uh uh uh, a few days ago actually i i traveled down um to a college in in state and uh i had a i had a saxophone audition for Mm -hmm. for college and um really yeah you think are you are you thinking about minoring or, or double um, majoring yeah something? possibly minoring or possibly double majoring in mm. in a science and a music um mm. and interesting yeah uh this uh it, it was a little 
it, it, it was a little weird because um, I'm a classical saxophonist, which yeah. Yeah. is a rare breed among saxophonists. <laughs> and yeah. uh, this university, they focus more heavily in jazz. Um, so here I am listening off my repertoire to uh, this professor, and, and he stops me for a minute and he says, y- you know we're, a, you know we're a, a jazz studio, right? And I'm like, yeah. And he's, he's like... Well, if you're playing, if you're playing Creston and and Milhoud and and Glasnov in high school, I have no doubt in my mind that you have the technique down to play jazz. We just we just need to you know we need to ease you into jazz because it's yeah. it's a different thing. You can't just slap a jazz mouthpiece <laughs> on and and call it good. Yeah. Um, but I played for him. I, I played the, the Glasnov again because it's what I was most familiar with. And um, he he really sounded like he wanted me at that school so he could uh, so he could so I could study with him. He, and could, he could jazzify you. Exactly. So he could jazzify me. Um, That's interesting. I, I, I guess like and I guess this kind of brings us full circle to putting things on your plate because like. <laughs> Mm-hmm. If you want to do music and a science, that's a lot of stuff, you know. And yeah. I know, I don't know if you remember. Um, I won't. I won't call him by name, but he he's um he ended up going. I don't know if I should even say where he's going, <laughs> but um, uh, I don't know if you're even old enough. But like the really that one year we had the really really amazing bassoonist and alto player. Oh yeah, um, he played tenor. Did he play? Yeah. He, well, he I, he plays. I, Amy plays all of them. The bassoon and saxophonist. Yeah. 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 I know. But um, but yeah. I mean, he ended up going to school for double majoring in saxophone and paper engineering. You know, <laughs> and it's like, <laughs> at some point he realized when he was like the when he's like ended up being one of the best players in the country of his age that oh maybe I should stop doing <laughs> paper engineering, but like, yeah, it's just it's just an interesting thing because, that's. Like, and I mean, some people do it, you know, some people do music and science and like, obviously from my pr- perspective as a musician, I think it's really cool that you're choosing to continue that. Mm-hmm. I mean, cause obviously you are skilled, but you know, that's the kind of thing where it does take a lot of dedication to be able to yeah. keep both of those things yeah. in your plate. And I think it's really, cause you know, I mean, you might be the kind of person who when you're older think, would think to yourself like, ah, oh, I regret having not pursued music more. Oh, I know I would, but I, I know I would if I did. I mean, a lot of people, like a lot of young, young people like you that are good but don't have have the passion for it, but don't find a place for it in their life, mm-hmm. end up regretting it. But yeah, so I think it's really interesting that you are choosing to keep that on your plate. And I mean, like, how do you think? I mean, I mean, it sounds like music is fulfilling for you. So mm-hmm. do you think that's going to help balance the rest of help in, in, when you're in college, balancing from um your more academic stuff and your more music stuff? Um, I, I 100% think so. Um, I, if I end up going to the, to the college that I auditioned at, um, they take their academics very seriously. Um, all of their programs are extremely rigorous. Um, and I know that I will be challenged if I do sciences. Yeah. Um, and, I want that. I want to be challenged. Mm-hmm. I want uh, I want to be pushed to grow. And I know that music will also push me, but it will give me a creative outlet to, you know, escape the, the, the science-heavy world that college would lock me in and let me, yeah. you know, feel the music and and be the music and i feel like that's something you probably understand as a as a music man yourself yeah for sure and like my thing is when i i'm planning on going to college for all music and my thing is you know i'm just like i want to be fully immersed in that Mm because that's all i want to focus on you know i want to i want to still be a percussionist but also focus on my composition and all that stuff you know so it's like you know, that that's just kind of what I want is just to be fully locked in mm-hmm. to music. But I can understand as someone who has at this point more of a side passion for it to still want to keep it up. And I think that's really special for you. Yeah. But um, I mean, like, I totally get the idea of wanting to keep things varied, you know, because mm-hmm. I mean, you're probably planning more on pursuing whatever your science degree gives you. Mm-hmm. But, 
you know, for me, it's like kind of an example on my YouTube channel is like all of my most successful content is like my zombie stuff. You know, like my, t- my list of top 10 most viewed videos is all just that. And a couple uh-huh. of my talking videos, which I also, I- I'm pretty proud of that. But like, and also this video is going to be uploaded like several months after recording. I'm sure it'll be the same. But my thing is like, if I wanted to have the most lucrative channel possible, I would only focus on zombie stuff and not have any of this fluff kind of thing. Uh-huh. And it's like, I've been doing Terraria stuff that gets like no views. But the thing for me is like, does it make you happy? Yeah, that's the thing. Is like I want to do it, and I feel like I would kind of go insane if I only ever uploaded one thing. Oh yeah, you know. And it's like doing a variety of things gives me the drive to have because I would not be uploading five zombies videos a week. I'd be uploading still just one video a week. Uh-huh. So it's not like my other uploads are taking away from that. It's just more stuff, you know. Yeah. So it's like I get that idea of like even like, and obviously. My hobby YouTube channel is a far cry from your college career, uh-huh. but <laughs> yeah, I might make money someday. But I mean, in a way, your YouTube analogy is the perfect way to to really symbolize and capture putting too much on your plate. You know, yeah, for sure. Zom- zombies is probably something you enjoy. I mean, yeah, for sure. Considering you make you you make videos about it, but also, I mean, you like playing Terraria. You yeah. like you like making talking videos you like doing this podcast so the biggest thing is you need to you need to figure out the things that you like yeah and and do yeah. and do them yeah exactly because like my the thing i've said and this is a, a sentiment i echoed in my um in my video discussing the 100 subscriber milestone mm-hmm. i just said like you know i never want to lose the um the feeling that I would have as, like, a super small creator. Uh-huh. Where, like, even just getting, like, one comment is, like, really exciting. Or mm-hmm. just hitting a milestone as, relatively speaking, insignificant as 100 subscribers is, like, a huge deal to me, you know? And it's, like, I don't want to lose... And the other thing, too, is, like, I understand that what's going to keep me going is if I'm enjoying it, mm-hmm. you know? Because, obviously, I'm not... It's not making me anything right now, so it's not, like, an actual job. Yeah. But, you know... It's all about just making something I'm proud of and also having a variety of things that I enjoy, you know? Yeah. And I think that's really just, isn't that just life, baby? In a way, <laughs> in a way, it really is. Yeah. And, you know, that's just, for me, I'm just trying my best. You know, obviously, I'm try- getting kind of bringing things full circle here to putting mm-hmm. things on your plate. You know, it's like, I, I, I kind of came with this analogy a while ago that, you know, this, this is kind of more about w- what I call free time fallout, mm. where, like, once you don't have things going on, all of a sudden, you're like, whoa, what do I do? Uh-huh. And you just randomly get depressed because your life is empty now. Yep. But, like, kind of what, the, your origin of that, you know, to me, it's like, you know, for you, it's like for school, right? Mm-hmm. That automatically puts a big hunk of broccoli on your plate, <laughs> you know? Love me some broccoli. Just a big... And it's not even, it's like, it's like the, st- it's like the, it's like the broccoli that like, isn't good. It's like broccoli Rob. It's like, no, it's like, it's like hard broccoli, but so without veggie dip. Uncooked broccoli? Uncooked, yeah, uncooked broccoli, right? Okay. That's like, school automatically puts uncooked broccoli on your plate. <laughs> okay. And then like, you do all these extracurriculars and things just pile up and pile up. And you just and then, end up with more broccoli. <laughs> Everything yeah. is just giving you broccoli. <laughs> yeah, for sure. And then there's just like a little sliver in there that occasionally you can slip in a little bit of time for yourself and you can pile stuff on top of other things. Mm-hmm. But, you know, I don't even know where I was actually going with this goddamn. <laughs> but like, it's just like taking like the plate thing, like yeah. literally, right? You know, it's like, like you have all these things that fill up your plate, but then like, you got to make sure you're actually enjoying what you're eating, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. And also leave a little, leave a little time for dessert, you know, yeah. leave a little room for yeah, that. hundred percent. It's like, you know, that's for me, it's just, I've been, <clears throat> and you know, like I said, I ha- I'm doing more now than I ever have, mm-hmm. you know? And why I'm able to do that is because I'm taking care of myself. Yeah. But also it's because I'm able to, maintain my drive and avoid burnout because i'm not focusing too hard on one thing Mm -hmm. you know like if all i ever did was my music i wouldn't love it anymore 
yeah. you know, because it you you wouldn't have <laughs> you wouldn't have passion in it. You'd be yeah. I don't I don't want to get to the point where I'm just mechanically doing stuff. Mm-hmm. You know, so having that Definitely. variety in my life, still maintaining connections, because you know, even though you know like. You know, even though like seeing my like this this week, you know, I I hadn't seen my girlfriend in a while, mm-hmm. so I had her over, and I remember saying to her, I was like, I was like, you know what? There are like four things I was supposed to do tonight that I could like only had time to do tonight, like video like videos I wanted to get out and stuff and homework, and I was like, but you know what? I'm here with you right now, and for me, that's like this this is the best way I could be spending my night right now. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that's just, I just got to keep that too, you know, because yeah. it's like, I, that that's, that's really important, you know, because I, I, you know, I love her mm-hmm. and I like being with her is, is the most important thing I feel like I could do more than anything else. You know, obviously it has to be balanced, of course, mm-hmm. just oh, like every, course. anything else. But if I can't find time for her then that's a problem. If yeah. I can't find time for myself to get good sleep and feel good, that's a problem. Or just to take care of myself, that's a problem. You know, so it's just about for me, it's almost I've gotten to the point and I for me this is what I think is healthy mm-hmm. where I've flipped things, you know? And my parents would always harp on me about school and school goes first. Mm-hmm. That's what they would always say to me. Uh-huh. Before the channel, before the music, before the girlfriend, before everything else, school goes first. And for me, it was always, no, school isn't first, you know, like, yes, I am going to be very successful and not take it not seriously. Mm -hmm. But it's like, if it gets to the point where it's 10 p.m. and I have one homework assignment that I need to do. You're going to bed. I'm going to go to bed. Yeah. You know, you you get that. And it's like, I've gotten to this point that I'm I'm really happy with this, that I've been able to flip things where me, my own health and, you know, my relationship with my girlfriend and my, my best friends and my family, that's what really comes first. Mm-hmm. And obviously I need to do the channel and the music and, and I mean, music is kind of a different thing. Cause that's like my real c- career drive. Mm-hmm. But like, I don't know. I just feel like it's the other way around for so many people. Yeah. And I'm just proud of the fact that I've been able to make this switch in my head where taking care of myself is the most important thing. No. And that's great that you've been able to do that. Um, and uh, I, I'm not sure if you were fully listening, but like the other day when we were having that conversation with Lucas, mm-hmm. um, one thing I said to him was uh, I asked him and it was more rhetorically speaking, but I guess now it's now it's not. Um, I know exactly what you're talking about. Are you playing an active role in your own life? Yeah. Which yeah. is a question that I think a lot of people really need to ask themselves. And you were probably able to ask him that because you've wondered that about yourself. You know, I, I asked him about that because I've, I 100% have, and I've been in his, I, I am in his shoes with the exact same scenario he is going through. Yeah, I yeah. went through it probably three days prior to having that talk with him. Um, yeah, and that's just, I mean, so many, so many people just, I mean, talking about when you were saying you're not forced to do things and I disagreed mm-hmm. saying, I think to an extent you are, you know, whether or not you realize it, it's like, it's that kind of thing where it's like le- leading an inactive role in your life would lead you to just do those things passively because yep. you feel like you need to. You and know? it would lead for you. It would lead you to, you know, it lead you to make sixth grade band music and to call that good. And it would lead you yeah. to, you know, come in, come into every band class and, and give, three out of ten percent of your skill yeah. to give ten out of ten percent for the band and and when you do that you 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 stop caring you grow apathetic and yeah. and everything on your plate you it it stops being fulfilling yeah. you know you Gotta don't keep the plate fresh you know exactly you don't have to love broccoli you use that analogy so I'm I actually continue. like broccoli I like broccoli well. too you don't My have dad to... makes some Good broccoli. I I I could go, I could go for some roasted broccoli right about now. I'm just just throwing that out yeah, there for sure. Um, you don't have to love broccoli, but I mean you have to love yourself enough to know that you need food and you need nourishment. And, exactly. and even if you don't love broccoli, 
I'm gonna I'm gonna eat broccoli before I eat nothing. But when you stop caring and when you start playing a passive role in your own life, you stop eating the broccoli, and mm-hmm. you just you watch it mold in front of you. Yeah, exactly. That's big. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's big. That's big. Don't, so yeah, don't let your broccoli on, mold, guys. We've gone exceptionally long. How so long is this? Fifty minutes nice. so far. But uh, already the longest episode. Because this is going to be the first in the new session that uh-huh. I'm putting up. So the, already by far the longest, which I'm not surprised about. <laughs> but yeah. I think we should probably... And I think already that was a pretty good way to wrap things up. Yeah. But anything else you wanted to Don't throw let your out broccoli to, mold, guys. Don't let, don't let the broccoli mold. You got to keep the fresh veggies on your plate, you know? Mm-hmm. But, I mean, I don't know if there was anything you wanted to recapitalize on or explore finally. But. Um having too much on your plate doesn't have to be a bad thing so long as you have built up a support system to accommodate for the amount of broccoli you have on your plate yeah um that's really what i mean for me you know is an importantly support system doesn't just mean your friends it means you yeah you you have to support yourself yeah so i think that's i think that resonates with me right now with all that i'm doing Mm -hmm. me as well yeah and i guess my final words would just be, uh, <laughs> just, uh, get some sleep. Get some sleep. I like because, that. Because, like, and again, it's like, like I said, I am a little bitch. I am <laughs> fragile. But, you know, I guess oh, my, my final words really are to just really learn to be real with yourself. Mm-hmm. You know, because. BFFR. BFFR. Because, you know, if you can't be honest with yourself, who can you be honest with, you know? Exactly. It's like, you gotta, you just gotta learn how to have a good relationship with yourself. Mm -hmm. And that's taken me forever. I've talked about it a million times on this channel, but I don't think there's anything that could be more important, so. Yeah. Yeah. It's life. We just gotta, we just got a big little, a little, what are those little, you know, like when you go to Olive Garden, and you get those little, they're all called Dulcinis. Dulcini. Little, little what? tiny little desserts. We had a little one of those just now. What the fuck are you talking about? I don't know. <laughs> In any case, that is, you want to you want to say your goodbyes? Uh, thank you so much for having me. Um, I hope that uh, this this talk resonated with all of you guys out there listening. Um, and if you have too much on your plate, uh, it's ne- it's you should never feel bad about you know taking some broccoli off yeah 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 daddy big out